Welcome to the Thriving Artist Podcast, where we share strategies and support for artists to thrive. We know that the art world can feel like a lonely place, and we want to provide a network of support, impactful strategies, and an abundance of encouragement to help you grow your authentic art career. We're your hosts. I'm Jamie Smith. And I'm Kaylin Butine, and we are also the co-founders of the Thrive Together Network, a community of female and non-binary identifying artists and artists who are caregivers. We truly believe in community over competition, and we're so glad you're here. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Thriving Artist Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jamie Smith. And I'm Kaylin Butine, your other host. And we are continuing our little two-part series of episodes about newsletters today. And this one is really just straight up uh, inspiration for you. Um, We want to share just kind of a quick and dirty list of content ideas for your newsletter. Some things you can consider as you're pulling together your, your newsletter, maybe for the first time, or maybe you're in like a bit of a rut. Maybe you haven't set a newsletter in a long time and you need kind of a jolt of inspiration for like, what are some things I could put in my newsletter. Sometimes we run out of ideas. So that's what this episode is. We're going to give you um, 10 10 ideas for what you can put in your newsletter. And who knows, maybe more will come out as we chat. And last week we talked about getting that monthly newsletter set up and sort of our like process for doing that, especially if you're just starting. Um, But even if you're not just starting like me, it was a good little reminder of a way to kind of mentally block out time and then put that time in your calendar and do it. So Mm -hmm. I'm really excited that we're kind of part twoing it and giving just more of these content ideas. So get ready. Yes. And, you know, I think this is one of those things where, it can be overwhelming sometimes because there are just a lot of things that we could share about as artists. Um, I think, you know, we we have like a lot of ground to cover. Like there's so much that we do from like researching our practice to connecting with other artists to like showing our work in places to, you know, there, there's a lot of components that go into our practice. So, you know, I do think that episode last week um, was good and also just to say a reminder here that it's important to have like a vision and a goal for you, your newsletter so that you don't get overwhelmed. Um, but you know, to do that work of thinking through what you want your newsletter to do for you and let that be your guide for how you make decisions on what content to include. So even though we're giving you a big list, you know, we're certainly not saying that you should include all these things. We're just trying to give you ideas for what you could include and maybe, um, you know, some things to spice up your newsletter if you're, if you're feeling uninspired. Yes. So our number, our first point, it's not really, it's not a number one type of list. It's just one. First idea. Our first idea is behind the scene insights. And so this would be a place to put, you know, creative process. Um, There's time-lapse video showing your technique, inspiration behind the work. But one thing I really want to say is that you have an opportunity in your newsletter to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Whereas Instagram, you're getting bits of this process. You're getting little videos and it's great when someone and, you know, but we don't even know who sees all of that, to be completely mm-hmm. honest, on the algorithm now. Um, so I think of the newsletter as you can take some of that Instagram content, but give some background and mm-hmm. say, you know, this is this piece I'm working on for this, and it means this to me, and here's me making it. Mm-hmm. Like even those sentences, I would love to see that clear of my own practice, like mapped out. Mm-hmm. Um, so just remembering that the newsletter offers an opportunity to tell stories which is great. And number two, um, kind of piggybacking off of that idea, our second idea for content um, for your newsletter is to share works in progress. Of course, this relates to behind the scenes, but I'm talking specifically about um, works that, you know, are still on the table. Um, it, and this is like not a share for every artist. Some artists like really don't like to share what, what they're, you know, what they have in progress. Um, but I just think, 
because I'm an artist reading other artists' newsletters, I love to see like sketches or preliminary studies, like drafts, um, kind of like get getting behind the scenes, but also literally seeing like what is happening as you're progressing through a piece. Um, mm -hmm. I think sharing that helps your subscribers feel valued because they you're like like you said, you're bringing them along that story. You're bringing them along on that journey as you work to like finish a really cool piece. Mm -hmm. And the thing with a newsletter is we want that audience to feel quite special as they've mm -hmm. taken another step to commit to you. Basically, it's like quite easy on Instagram to just follow along. It's another thing to invite you into the, the holy inbox, the holy grail. So we want to think about how are we rewarding? How are we of service? Um, so another one, you know, a good one is discounts and offers. But again, this depends on your practice. It's on your goals. Are you selling your work directly? You might not be doing that at all, but it is a great way. Um, I know an artist, Rebecca Chaperone, who I used to share my studio with, who is very, very savvy and uses her newsletter very well. Um, often that newsletter is actually a place for um, first look and like the first availability to purchase. Um, it can sometimes be a discount code, but actually it's more of this place of you know, I appreciate you. I want you to see this first, mm -hmm. uh, which I feel great when I get those. Mm -hmm. I love feeling like I'm getting a first look at an artist's new collection. Mm -hmm. um, and that does feel very connected to that idea of like, um, whether it, whether or not it's a discount, it's like you feel special in getting to see and it, it incentivizes you to purchase work, I think, mm -hmm. um, specifically for artists who are sharing work for sale. Um, so moving on uh, to something that is one of my favorite things to read in an artist newsletter, our fourth idea in our list of 10 content ideas for your newsletter is to share personal art re reflections, excuse me, personal art reflections. So you can think of this as like your thoughts from your literal or metaphorical studio journal. Not everyone does, but I personally love learning more about what is going on inside an artist's head. Like, what are they thinking as they're making this piece? What, how are they processing those decisions? Where are they pulling inspiration? Um, you can really keep this art related um, to your practice by, you know, just kind of sharing like what you think about when you make your, your work um, and kind of how your work is affecting you personally, like what journey is your work taking you on? Doing some writing about that I think is really interesting and sharing can help pull others into that story, that narrative about why you make the work you make and why it's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. And kind of, you know, off of that, number five is curated content and recommendations. So as you're making your reflections in your studio, another great thing to do is share, you know, the books, the mo movies, music, and other sources of information inspiration that you are interested in and that you're thinking about and it's relating to your work because all of that you know mm -hmm. just flows into the kind of work we make so that is kind of a nice way to feel like you're giving back and kind of linking it and saying you know check this out this is why I like it and again kind of showing that personality can be really good I love getting like a little book list or like a studio playlist from mm -hmm. an artist those are like some of my and favorite do. things a book list once a year, right, Kaylin? Or yeah, try I, my newsletter is kind of trying to lean more into like art reflections and research. Like what am I, where am I pulling ideas from? Um, and included in that is like a lot of book talk um, mm -hmm. in my newsletter. So yeah. Yeah, I like um, that. Yeah. Um, our number six uh, idea, our sixth idea in our list of 10 ideas for your newsletter is, of course, exhibition announcements. Um, this is definitely an obvious one, but don't forget that this is a really great strategy to get people to come to your exhibitions, to get them excited about them, to get them to want to like click on, you know, the PDF of what work is going to be shown. Um, make sure that you are sharing loudly and proudly when you're showing your work and including all the details that people would need to show up, what time openings are, where they are, location, address, um, you know, be be honest and be proud to share um, your exhibition announcements in your newsletter. Well, and there's just so much noise on social with this that I, someone said this to me, like um, I listened to a podcast and they were like, 
it's very rare that someone will leave the app. So if, mm. whether that's Instagram, Facebook, if, if you're in it and you're scrolling, you don't click outside of that world. Mm -hmm. Whereas your newsletter, it's very common for someone to like look at the date of an exhibition and then put it in their calendar. They yes. will go do that. And so we have to just think of the paths of communication and talking to people. So it's really worth sending those newsletters to remind about an exhibition and putting a calendar link that links to their calendar. Mm -hmm. um, just really thinking through like how you use these things and what you like to see. Um, and with that, you know, this is kind of an obvious one, but especially with exhibitions or projects, a sneak peek or two teasers is number seven and sort of hint of what the work is going to be. And again, we have an opportunity to tell stories in our newsletter and really build towards that exhibition. Whereas on Instagram, you don't know what people are seeing. They might mm -hmm. see something and they don't realize it's connected to this exhibition. And, and whereas like we can have this all in one place in a newsletter. Well, and in a newsletter too, um, back to that idea number seven about sneak peeks and teasers, you can build more of a logical sequence, right? Like you yeah. can first release a sneak peek and then say next week in my newsletter, I'm going to do the full reveal. Like you can kind of like build a little bit of drama in it because you know that hopefully people are actually reading these like in the sequence. Whereas like you said with Instagram, sometimes I see a post from, you know, like that was two posts ago and I missed, like, you never know kind of what's going to pop up in the feed from somebody that you follow. Mm -hmm. um, number eight, we think you should share your goals. This is one that you may want to be intentional with like how much you share. Um, this is, you know, a, a personal one, but I think sharing your dreams and goals and like vocalizing them and verbalizing them, putting them out in the world is really powerful. I think it's really inspiring to learn what you are working towards as an artist, what hopes and dreams you have for your practice and your career. Um, and just saying like, I have a goal of X, Y, Z. You never know who's reading your newsletter. They might be somebody who has a resource that they can share with you that can help you get to that goal. So um, that's an idea for content for your newsletter is sharing your goals. Well, and it's, you know, we love rooting for people. So yes. I think this is a great one. And I see artists and I've done this too, where I share when I've gotten the thing. So it's like, yes, this year was one of my goals was to have this exhibition and it happened, but I've never thought about actually sharing before that. And that's yeah. the vulnerability part, but I would love that, like reading mm -hmm. that from another artist. So I really like that. Um, number nine is images of your art, which feels like a very dumb moment. <laughs> Don't forget that this is a space where someone in their new, in their email, all they're getting is probably annoying work emails and like logistics for their kids' daycare. And you have an opportunity to pop in and be a little breath of fresh air and see something yes. beautiful and you don't know how that's going to land. So don't forget about beautiful pictures of your art is enough and it doesn't have to be something more than that. And sometimes we put a lot of pressure that it has to be a discount or this. It's like, just show up. That yes. can be enough. Show up and share good images of your art. Um, mm -hmm. Such a such a great one as we move towards wrapping up. So finally, we're, we're at the end of our list of 10 content ideas for your newsletter. We had to end at a place where we often end these episodes where we think number 10, your 10th idea is community highlights. So this could be many things, but I think sharing a bit of love for the artists that are in your network, the artists that are in your community, in your newsletter is just like such a sweet thing to do and can also really help, you know, connect you to other artists, um, artists that you admire. It can help show what kind of artist and person you are as somebody who champions others and, you know, wants to serve and connect with others as well as just promoting your own career. So turning the spotlight on to, you know, some of the folks like either in your subscriber audience or other artists that you're friends with, um, you can always like highlight comments from people who've maybe shared like sweet messages with you, um, 
curators or collectors who've said something nice about the work. You can link to, you know, like your art buds and say, don't forget to check out that, you know, my friend Jamie Smith has a new collection releasing. Like just small little shout outs that you can sprinkle throughout that show that you're an artist who has, you know, a network of people that are supporting you and that you are also championing, I think is like a fun thing to add um, to Mm -hmm. your newsletter. It can just foster community and, you know, pull, pull, pull people in, um, Mm -hmm. in different ways. Yeah. I love that. And we're going to finish off here with a quick recap. So when you are quick referencing, what are 10 ideas for your newsletter? One behind the scenes, two works in progress, three discounts or offers Four personal art reflections. Kaylin, I'll let you take it from here. Number five is curated content and recommendations. Number six is ex- exhibition announcements. Number seven is sneak, sneak peeks and teasers. Number eight is sharing your goals. Number nine is images of your art. And number 10, community highlights. So I we feel really very inspired by this. I do too. I'm like ready to go write a few newsletters. That's not something I say very often. No, I do never. I never say that. So (laughs) I like this. Um, Well, we hope that was, you know, had the same effect on you as it did on us, that you feel ready and empowered to send some great art newsletters. Um, Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can connect with us and hear more content like this by joining our virtual community of artists. We would love to have you. You can join by heading to thrivetogethernetwork.com. Jamie, want to close us? We are here for you. We are cheering you on and we believe in the work that you're doing as thriving artists.